Hey, I wanted to make you this quick video about the three steps to buying a property off market with seller financing. And I'm kind of a visual guy, so we're gonna go over to my desk right now. I'm gonna draw you a picture and explain it. Okay, so what is it that we want to accomplish? Well, we want to be able to do deals. We wanna be able to do deals when we want to do deals. We wanna be able to do deals when we create them, not when the market tells us we are allowed to, not when a bank tells us we are allowed to. We wanna do deals when we want to do deals. So let's just stop and talk about what are the things that get in the way? Well, one is it can be hard to get deals that work, yeah? We are not usually able to just pull up the MLS and find some amazing kind of thing. It tends to be pretty competitive. Um, realtors probably have more VIP clients than us, so we're not getting access to all the secret inventory, so it can be hard to find deals that make sense. The second thing is that it can be hard to get loans. Even at its very best, a loan from a bank is still a pain to go through that process, even if you qualify, but then you have to qualify. Um, you know, I've come to feel like the letters DTI are probably the three most feared letters for real estate investors these days, because you know, you have to manage yourself to the bank's expectations and play their game in order to qualify for a loan. And even if you do qualify, it's still kind of a nightmare of filling out paperwork and all sorts of stuff like that. And then lastly, when we, even if we have deals and even if we have loans, we often don't have enough cash, right? Because we need cash for earnest money. We need cash for down payments. We need cash for rehab costs. Um, if we're doing bank loans, those tend to be pretty big down payments as well. So we need access to cash. So what are the things that we would like to have be true instead of this, right? Well, it's pretty simple. It's really just the inverse of these things. Wouldn't it be nice if we had easy deal flow instead of loans or uh, deals that are hard to, to find things that make sense wouldn't it be nice if we had easy deal flow instead of it being hard to get loans what if it was you know, wait for it revelation easy to get loans right that's what we would really prefer to be the case easy to get loans and what if not having the cash instead of that we had access to cash. So these would be the three steps, the three processes that we need to put in place in order to do all the deals that we want to do when we want to do them uh, without limitations. So how do we actually do that then? Well, let's just break it down into a couple steps for each of these. So let's just take a look at easy deal flow. If we wanna have easy deal flow, then what we need to do is we need to first identify the right types of deals, or more importantly, identify the right types of sellers that are gonna have the deals that we could buy in the way that we want to buy them. Because if I just pause here and zoom out for a quick, for a quick second, the way that we can solve all of these, especially these first two, is by going off of the market, sourcing deals ourselves that are not listed, and by getting our loans from the same place we get our properties, which is the sellers themselves. So if that's our overall strategy, what are the steps to do that? So if we want easy deal flow, the first thing we have to do is we have to identify the people who are most likely to be able to sell us the properties we wanna buy in the way that we want to buy them. Now, once we've identified them, the next thing we have to do is we have to know how to reach out to them in the way that's gonna be most successful, in the way that's going to um, have the highest likelihood of them responding to us and feeling comfortable with us and thinking of us in exactly the way that we want to be thought of. And what happens when we do this is we have competitionless situations in large part. We don't have sellers who call us because they're getting 27 other offers from people. They're just having a conversation with us and that's all. So we've identified then we've reached out and now they're calling us back. And the third thing we need to do to establish this easy deal flow is we need to build rapport. And if we can do these three things, we are gonna have 
easy deal flow. But the next thing, we can't just have deal flow and then not be able to close those. We need to be able to have some ease getting the loans that we want and need to get from these sellers themselves. So let's look at three parts of easy to get loans. The first thing is, we like to say that we need to solve the person because really we are shopping for a person. When we go back here to this step of identify, we're actually identifying people who own properties. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how to solve the person who is the seller before we can do the second thing, which is solve the deal. Now this isn't normal for most real estate investors. They just dive right into solving the deal without a lot of thought about the person, but we are going to really, really focus on the person throughout our whole process. But once we've built rapport and we're really kind of working in the negotiation phase of this now, we're gonna solve the person. Once we've solved the person and we understand the, the elements of the deal, then we can solve the deal. And once we have in our mind a solution for the, per, the person and a solution for the deal, then the last thing we do is we propose a solution for them. Now, most investors use the word offer here. We don't offer we propose and there's a major philosophical difference between offering and proposing proposing is much more about the person them what they're trying to accomplish whereas offering is very much about us so we're going to use the solution that we've come up with the person for the person the solution we've come up for the deal and we're going to propose it now in a way that's going to have the highest likelihood of them saying yes now the last of the three phases is so great we've got deal flow We've negotiated a deal that has been accepted that includes seller financing. That's great, but we probably still need some access to cash, right? Because we have to make an earnest money payment. We probably have to make a down payment. We might have some repair costs we want to uh, factor in. So let's take a look at three things related to accessing cash. The first thing we're going to learn is how to tap into the resources that we already have. You probably already have a property or two properties. And one of the most common questions is how can I extract equity from the properties I already have? Because when I call my bank or my credit union, they're not real excited about making uh, home equity loans and lines of credit on non-owner occupied properties. That's fine. We don't need the bank or the credit union to say yes to us because we have other ways to tap into that equity. So the first thing we have to do is learn and practice those other ways of tapping into equity that creates liquidity and cash for us. The second thing we need to do is we need to create new sources for that cash. These sources might be people, they might be companies, they might be uh, different mechanisms like that, but we need to tap into what we've already got access to. Then secondly, we need to really focus on cultivating new things, new resources for capital. And then the last thing is we need to be aware of how we can do other deals, right? Because we're trying to buy rental properties for the most part here, but our marketing is going to have a byproduct where it stirs up opportunity that isn't really perfect for rental properties. So when we get a deal, we get a person and we're talking to and we're having a great conversation and we're, we're getting to this situation with them, but we realize it doesn't make perfect sense as a rental. We need to have other productive things we can do with those deals. And other productive things might be deal structures that generate short-term cash that then we can use in our rental acquisition process. So we access our, we learn to access cash by tapping into what we already have in different and unique ways, creating new sources of cash, and then learning to take our deal flow and convert or redirect some of those into other forms of deals, like say flips or wholesale deals, for instance, um, that will create short-term cash for us that we can use in our efforts to buy rental properties. So those are the three steps to buying a property off market with seller financing so that you can just build your portfolio at your will instead of when somebody else like a bank or the marketplace or a realtor or whatever tells you that you can't. You, know, you have to make it easy to have good deal flow. You have to make it easy to get the loans and you have to have access to the cash you're going to need. Um, I have just put together a new program that is gonna walk uh, clients and students through that exact process, not just like in the academic sense, like me just teach you the ideas, but in a very, very workshoppy manner. And so, you know, you saw within each of those steps, there were three steps there too. So we're gonna go through that in great deal. So 
if you are interested in just getting more details about that program, um, if that would help you get to your goals of, uh, of buying some properties off market with seller financing, just comment below. Just say the word deals in the comments below or send me a private message back and I can send you the details.